Hello there, welcome to the Saroy channel. I'm really thrilled you've joined me tonight. We've got such a wonderful story for you, all the way from London, England, believe it or not, from Victoria. But in fact, her Bigfoot en foot encounter happened in Minnesota, here in America. So let's get started. Dear Sarah and all your listeners, I'm writing to tell you about my Bigfoot encounter that happened last year in 2019. My name is Victoria and I am 18 years old. I live in London, England with my parents in the Wimbledon area. My father is American and is originally from Minnesota, but he moved out to London after he met my mother. And let's just say the rest is history. My father's brother, my uncle, lives in the Deep Haven area near Lake Minnetonka in Minnesota or somewhere thereabouts. The house where he lives is very beautiful with magnificent and stunning views that look over the lake and he has all the mod cons that you could ever imagine luxury living to have. Anyway, my American uncle Peter lives with his wife Beryl in this lavish, beautiful and stunning home. Both my uncle and aunt are consumed by their careers. They are so driven. Beryl is involved with interior decoration and she has her own business, which is thriving. And Peter is involved in the world of real, real estate, although I'm not exactly sure what his job entails. Anyway, I do not think they even considered having children of their own. I think Peter probably did, and I think he wanted children, but Beryl never did, and so that put an end to that. Anyway, Peter invited us to stay at his home last year, and my sister Natalie and I were delighted at the prospect of visiting America for the first time in our lives, because we had heard so much about your beautiful country. Anyway, when we arrived at their home, Peter made us very welcome, but you could tell Beryl, Beryl, his wife, did not appreciate having us around. In fact, she was less than thrilled to see us. Every day, Beryl looked like she had stepped off the catwalk. She was so well-groomed and always wore the most fabulous clothes. However, both Natalie and I decided from the word go that we did not like her. Beryl did not do any cooking because she wanted to preserve her long, pink, pink glittering talons, and so she, could go, so she got the cook to make us anything that we wanted, and that was pretty cool. However, the real bummer was that neither Natalie and I could relax in my uncle's home, because Beryl would always be looking over our shoul her shoulders, checking that we weren't damaging her furniture or dropping anything on her immaculate wooden flooring. I would overhear her all the time, telling my uncle that she wished that we would go back to England because she was living in terror that we were going to ruin her white furnishings because we were so clumsy and heavy-handed. As you can imagine, overhearing that made me paranoid. I was so worried about dropping something, and then that's invariably what I did. I accidentally, accidentally dropped my hot chocolate over her beautiful white settee. The cleaner tried to clean it up before Beryl noticed, but it was too late. Beryl came storming into the living room area, looking furious, and she literally had a tantrum on the spot. She told us that we were the clumsiest, clumsiest children that she had ever met, and that we were making her house look like a dump. I don't think I'm a real kid at 18, do you? That was the final straw for Beryl. She wanted to send us home to England immediately, but my uncle was not having it, and he wasn't keen on the idea. He wanted us to stay a bit longer because he liked having us around. He asked Natalie and I how we would feel about going camping somewhere in Minnesota on our own. We thought it was a wonderful idea, and as you can imagine, Beryl was more than delighted to get rid of us and took us to a camping shop to get us kitted out for the great outdoors and no expense was spared, let me tell you. So that's how we found ourselves camping at Chipipua, Chipipua National Forest where I believe there are about 1,300 lakes and tons and tons of streams. You cannot imagine how thrilled we were to escape Beryl's meticulous clutches and to finally be enjoying the great outdoors. For the first time in days, we actually felt free, and it was so beautiful that we knew we had made the right decision to come camping. We loved the American wilderness. We decided we wanted to go and camp somewhere well off the beaten track, away from other hikers and holiday makers. We just wanted to be all on our own and enjoying the wildlife and the beautiful wetlands, which were just so magnificent. On day six of a very successful and happy camping holiday, we had explored so many country trails off the beaten track and really found a superb place to camp that night. It was close to a water source and very secluded, 
and we noticed plenty of wildlife there, especially white-tailed deer. The only big bummer about cami camping in Minnesota were all the mosquitoes. They were everywhere. So the mosquito, the, the mosquito bomb Beryl had brought us was a lifesaver and worked a treat, let me tell you. Anyway, it was that night when we had been sitting by the fire roasting marshmallows that we suddenly heard someone whistling close to where we were camping. I was extremely upset because I thought someone was camping close to us and I did not know how that could have happened. You would have think, thought we would have noticed if anybody was nearby. Hear that, I asked Natalie. Just our luck, someone has set up camp close to us and honestly, I don't know how this has happened. I thought we found a remote spot, said Natalie. That really is bad luck. I decided I wanted to find out where the other campers were camping. What is the point, said Natalie. We cannot exactly go camp camping somewhere else in the middle of the night. That would be completely crazy. I agreed and started to settle down into my sleeping bag when I heard the whistling sound again, and this time it was too close for comfort. Comfort. I sat up sharply, listening closely to the sound of the night and wondering where these people were camping and how it was that Natalie and I had not seen them setting up camp in the first place. Suddenly I heard footsteps very close to our tents and then this horrible, heavy breathing sound that sounded like it was being put on because it was so heavy. I was mad. Whoever these campers were, they were now trying to scare us with a, some kind of practical joke that was far from funny. Or they were just checking us out in the middle of the night. Who knew? Who does that, I thought. I woke up Nat Natalie, who was now fast asleep, and told her what had just happened. Those campers back there are trying to scare us, I said. I think that is really of mean, re really mean of them creeping us out like this. I distinctly heard their footprints outside our tent, and one of them was making heavy breathing sounds on purpose, just to scare us. Well, let me tell you, Nats, it's not going to work. Natalie groaned. They're probably just curious to see who was camping close to them. Go back to sleep, she said, pulling the sleeping bag over her head. So it was then that I decided to investigate myself all on my own. Obviously, Natalie wasn't going to join me, and so that was that. I took out my torch and I slipped quietly out of my tent. I was not happy that someone was playing tricks on us and I really wanted to give them a piece of my mind and a taste of their own medicine. Even if it was late at night. I could hear a strange noise coming from an area within the trees. I do not know how to describe the noise, but it was like a very loud chattering sound, but it sounded angry. I do not ha know how else to explain it, but it gave me the impression that pe two people were having an argument about something in a strange language. I thought that the two campers must have got into an argument or something. Maybe someone was mad with the person who had tried to scare us in the night and was giving them a piece of their own mind, I thought. So I crept closer to where the noise was coming from but, and by now it was, I was extremely curious and I do not mind admitting rather nosy to say the least. I switched my torch off because I did not want the campers to see me spying on them for some reason, I wanted to eavesdrop on what, what they were fighting about. I hid behind a large tree that was covered in heavy moss and had a very massive girth. I peered around the corner of the tree and saw two figures fighting each other. I remember thinking that they were very large men, but in the moonlight I could see that their arms were way too long to be human and also their whole bodies were covered with hair. From the back view, they almost resembled bears because of the broadness of their stature and the dark hair, of course. But these creatures, whatever they were, were definitely not human, and they were definitely not bears. What the heck are they, I wondered. The one creature that appeared to be winning the fight was a very large specimen. He was about eight foot in height and about 700 pounds. I watched him closely, and he literally threw his smaller counterpart on the ground, who was about six foot in height and a lot smaller than he was. He then proceeded to pounce on the creature and hold him down with his weighty muscular arm in what looked like a very dominant stance. It was like he was trying to establish his superior dominance, if that makes any sense. Like he was saying, I'm the boss and, and accept it now. The six-footer started to make a whimpering, chattering sound from beneath the crushing hold of his opponent, as if his opponent was actually hurting him a bit. Then suddenly the larger creature let go of his hold as if the victory had been won and the smaller one had surrendered to his authority. 
The smaller creature looked pathetic and almost puny compared to the last large beast, even though he was in in his own right pretty large. I could see him looking very sorry for himself, and his head hung low in a very submissive pose, as if he had accepted that he was well and truly defeated. The larger creature creature let out a warning growl, and then he started to chatter ever so excitedly. I watched his whole body bend down in a squatting position, and then he threw something on the ground over his shoulders as if it was nothing. It was a dead white-tailed deer, and a big one at that. I realised that this is what the creatures had been fighting over. I watched the massive creature walk away with the huge deer slung over his shoulders, and I had a good view of his face in the moonlight. I was astonished to see his face face looked almost human, but it was set in a head that looked cone-shaped, and he had virtually no neck and monstrous shoulders and chest. I could not see the ears because they were covered by his long hair. I noticed he appeared to have a beard and a moustache. The other areas of his face were naked like a human's, only the skin tone was more greyish, and the skin and more rugged and hardened by the environment, I should imagine. As the creature walked away, I noticed that he made light work of his movements, because he literally glided across the ground as if he was on roller skates. I noticed his sides were enormous, sorry, his strides were enormous. One footstep was equivalent to five of ours, and I'm not joking. That's how quick he was. The little creature, whatever he was, looked defeated and disappointed, and he walked away chatting sorrowfully to himself in a way that suggested that he was very far from happy with the outcome. But nevertheless, he went on his way. I watched the scene in horror. I could hear the larger creature walking away, and he was whistling to himself happily. Ah, I thought, so this was where the whistling had come from that I had heard earlier before. You may think I rushed back to the tent as quickly as I could, but I did not. I was so stunned by what I had seen, almost as if my body had been tasered. I just stood there for a long time in silence, hardly daring to believe what I had seen. I even rubbed my eyes fiercely trying to see if indeed I had fallen asleep and been dreaming all this crazy stuff. I was not. This had really happened, and I was standing behind a tree to prove it. The whole thing was weird. And what were those creatures, I wondered? I'd never seen anything like them before. Anyway, when I woke up, Natalie, and told her what what I had seen, she was convinced I'd been having nightmares and it was just my imagination on overdrive. But I knew what I had seen. After our camping trip, we returned to England And one day online I found a picture of a beast that reminded me of the creature I had seen in Minnesota. And after doing a lot of googling and looking at YouTube, I realised that I had seen a Bigfoot. I do not think Bigfoot lives in this part of the world in England, I mean. If he did, I think there would have been some documented sightings and people would talk about it here. However, if you mention the word Bigfoot here in England, they look at you as if you're completely bonkers and that all this stuff is hocus pocus and something that belongs to a Harry Potter novel. However, I know differently, and I know what I saw that night was a Bigfoot. And what's more, I'm sure your listeners will believe me. By the way, I love American people, and I love your country, with the exception of Beryl, of course. And I thought Minnesota was such an amazing place, and it was such a privilege to go there. I can honestly say I was not afraid of the Bigfoots, even though they were scary. But I think it was because their attention was focused on each other, and they were so wrapped up in their fight that they never even noticed me, and I kind of felt in that moment that they never would. I do feel privileged to have seen what I saw that night, and the good news is that Natalie finally believes me after I showed her all the stuff about Bigfoot, but she is now very upset that she never got to see him too. All I say is serves her right for not being as nosy as me. Love to all you and all your listeners, and hello to all you people from Minnesota. Until next time, goodbye.